Well, usually Meryl does this by himself, but our um, guest pastor gave us a whole chapter to read. So we're going to do it together. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify the Spirit, the water and the blood, and the three are in agreement. We accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his Son. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar, because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. So that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have and approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that He will have what we ask of Him. If anyone seeks his brothers, <clears throat> sees his brother commit a sin that does not lead to death, he should pray that God will give him <clears throat> life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I'm not saying that he should pray about that. All wrongdoings is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who is born of God keeps him safe, and the evil one cannot harm him. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know who is... who is even in the Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and the eternal life. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. So the Lord said, fear not, you don't have to listen to me this morning. <laughs> so Henry was starting to make me a little nervous this morning, but because I definitely wasn't prepared. And first off, I'd like to um, say that we need to keep Alan and Sherry in prayer. I don't know if you know any of their history of going on vacation. They haven't had the best of luck with our breakdowns and flus and the weather. So let's keep them in prayer for this vacation definitely deserve it. So, if you don't want to listen to me, let's listen to Henry here speak. It's a great honor to have Henry here speak for us, and we just turn it over to him, and the Lord speaks to him. Thank 
Thank you. By the way, that was, that was a good scripture reading. You could have read five more <laughs> chapters. You had, you had lots of energy left. Yeah, uh, Alan, I'm a little different scene up here than Alan. He, co he calls me uh, his little brother. And, uh, you know, we're like family. We're, we've been very close to uh, the Henson family. And, and uh, so it's amazing to me that Alan trusts his little brother to, to uh, share behind his pulpit. But uh, it's uh, very sobering to me because, you know, you're stepping into somebody else's shoes and it's not mine. And, of course, Alan would say, well, it's not his either. And I appreciate that. It, it's the Lord's. And uh, one thing I, I uh, feel that I should loudly proclaim here is that this church, you, are the biggest supporters in, uh, in uh, doing things for the community, reaching out to the community. When the Ministerial Association wants to do uh, stuff to reach out to the community, this, uh, we can always depend on this church. You're just there, and I really appreciate that. I want to thank you for that. And uh, Jacob and Michaela, they're a young a uh, young couple that are full of energy and and uh, have a heart to serve, and we really appreciate that they're doing a lot. Then, uh, then comes along little uh, energetic Michaela or uh, Kara, and then there's a little Henry, which is still leaving in the womb. <laughs> so, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I kind of doubt that you call him Henry, but you never know. Yeah. So anyways, uh, when the scripture, the scripture in First uh, John 5, if we notice that it's a very confidential scripture, and uh, when John was writing that, he was very confident in who he was in the Lord. And uh, that's one thing I want to talk about today is how, how do we get there? Are we confident? And, and why? And uh, I named the title of my uh, message, uh, Why Christmas? You know, uh, Christmas is really the most important uh, day of the year, even more important than Good Friday or, or Easter. And why is that? We don't think of it that way, but... If you think about it, there is no resurrection without a death. First, we have to have a death. And there's no death without a conception. First, there needs to be a birth, or there can't be a death, and there can't be a resurrection. So Christmas is the most important. And, uh, you know, uh, society looks at Christmas as uh, in this helpless little child was born, little baby Jesus. But uh, today we want to uh, we want to talk about what Jesus or what Christmas was really about. It wasn't just a helpless little child. He came as a little child, but why did he? Why did he need to come in a physical body? Before we go on, I'd like to uh, uh, bow our heads in, in prayer. Lord, I I thank you, Lord, for this body here, Lord, for everybody that's here, Lord. I ask that you would bless them. And, Lord, I, I just surrender my, my own ideas, my tongue to you, Lord Jesus. And I is, you said it's not by might or by power, but it's by your spirit. So, Lord, I ask that when I open my mouth, Lord, that you would speak, Lord Jesus, and, and do what you do best, Lord. Just change us from glory to glory, as Paul was saying, Lord, in, in Jesus' name. Lord, we also pray a protection over Alan and Sherry. <coughs> They can enjoy and not worry about anything, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so in, uh, in uh, Genesis, when uh, you know, the, the original plan for God to, uh, to create uh, heaven and earth and, and man, put man in heaven and earth, was 
uh, heaven, or earth was supposed to be a branch of heaven. We're actually, that's why Paul said we're, we're on this earth, but we're not off this earth. We don't, we don't belong here. We're just here to influence. We're here to bring, um, we're here to bring heaven to earth. That's why Jesus came, was to bring heaven to earth. And uh, sometimes we, we try to bring earth to heaven, and uh, that's not what his plan was. Anyways, uh, we know the story about the fall. I'm not going to spend much time there. <clears throat> but I want to build a foundation uh, there. Um, uh, the time when, Jesus, when uh, God created man, he said, have dominion. So he gave the dominion of earth, he gave to man. Okay? And then uh, the fall came. But what I wanted to point out there is in Genesis 3.15, it says, uh, and I will put uh, enmity between you and the woman and uh, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your heel. You shall bruise his head. Uh, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. His heel. <coughs> Anyways, what he was promising there is he was promising a Messiah. In other words, he was saying to, uh, to the devil that I have a plan. And this same woman that you deceived is going to give me a body. And I am going to defeat you on earth through this woman. That was the promise, in other words, my own words, what he was saying there. So it was promised way back in the garden it was his plan. So why, I was thinking this morning, why all these uh, years of, you know, without God here on earth? I don't, I don't know. Bible doesn't say, but there's a lot of things that happened in, during that time. A lot of uh, prophecies, and uh, like the proclamation we, uh, you read this morning, uh, and it's made, there was times when, when uh, the prophets of old, when they prophesied, and if you notice, it says, uh, before they prophesied, it says, the Spirit of the Lord be, uh, came upon them. The Spirit of the Lord came down, and the prophets prophesied, of the coming Messiah. But, uh, but really, the, the Spirit of the Lord had to come down on them to do that, but the Spirit of the Lord was not living in this place, on this planet at that time. Why? <clears throat> because God had given a man a dominion of the earth, and when man fell into sin, man introduced sin on the earth here and and then the spirit left and that's why if you wonder why sometimes we don't hear God or God seems far away or uh, God doesn't seem to be active in our life uh, we need to check ourselves and sometimes we're going through a desert or a wilderness but if we uh, if we are living in sin then God uh, the spirit with draws or goes away because God is he's just and he's holy and he cannot tolerate sin and uh, you know in today's world we hear that it's all about love and it is but that does not mean that we can live in sin we can live our own lives and God is going to be okay with it it doesn't work that way and we have we have dominion and the kingdom is within us now, so, so we have authority. Uh, we, have, we make choices if the, the Holy Spirit is welcome in our hearts or not. If we decide to go our own way and uh, live in sin or our own agendas, then there's no place for the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit does not want to rent our house. He wants to have possession, live there. We cannot incorporate God into what we're already doing. It doesn't work that way. We have to sell out to him. He wants everything. <clears throat> he's not going to rent our house. He's going to either own it or he's not going to live there. And it's, it's not because God is unloving it's because he cannot tolerate sin. He cannot. <clears throat> and 
thank God he doesn't because it wouldn't be very trustworthy. Then uh, we go through all these, these pages, the time of old, and uh, in Matthew 4, verse 17, Uh, Matthew 4 verse 17 from that time Jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand now uh, we went we read the proclamations this morning how the uh, the Messiah was born and you know and if you think about it uh, in the first of the gospel of John the first chapter of the first verses, it says that there was nothing created that was not created by him. And so, if you think about it, Jesus left the place, his place in glory, the sun, to come down here on this planet Earth. And if you, if you do a study on, on the atmosphere and all the galaxies and stuff, we're only a tiny speck of the, the atmosphere is earth and to me it's amazing that he he cares about this tiny speck here and actually uh, we're more important to him than than the atmosphere the the his the rest of his creation because he wants fellowship with us he created us uh, in his image You don't have a clock around here, Jacob? <laughs> okay. So you said I can go till two? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, anyways, um, so Christ was born, and then in uh, John uh, uh, 4 24, he, he starts preaching. I mean, Matthew 4, 17, he starts preaching. For that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, if you, if you look, uh, in, uh, at that time, before Jesus came, the church was already here. There was a church. There was religion here. There was the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and they were already here. <clears throat> so why, why did Jesus come? Did he come to join their church or whatever? He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He came to reestablish the kingdom here on earth. And you know, it's, like a, uh, it's like, for instance, the Wells Fargo Bank has a, they have a home base. And the bank here is a branch of their home base. So their branch represents their home base, wherever all their branches do. And so that's what we are here on earth. We're to represent the kingdom of heaven. We're, he came to bring the kingdom here on earth. <clears throat> then in uh, John 4, verse 24. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in truth and spirit. The reason I wanted that verse is because it's to confirm that God is spirit. So when a God gave, gave dominion to man, it meant that, that the God is giving over the earth to man. Okay? So the reason, there is, there's different reasons why God needed uh, to be born through a birth canal. Uh, one is, the reason he needed a body is he needed blood. His spirit does not have blood. And uh, he needed to be tempted. Uh, he needed to take our sins on him. And he needed to die. His spirit does not die. So that's why he came uh, in a, a form of, uh, of uh, a human body. So <clears throat> when we look at the cross, we see Jesus hanging on the cross. 
But uh, if we take away, if we take away the, the person, Jesus, hanging on the cross, if we remove that, and then we, we see our sins hanging on the cross, okay? Now, I know that Jesus went on the cross and the, our sins came on him. I realize that, but I'm trying to, to bring this to more of a reality. <clears throat> Sometimes we, we, uh, we tend to focus on, well, Jesus was on the cross and he did all this for us, and he did. But do we, is it really in our hearts what he did? Or that he, uh, that our sins were on him. So if we take away the, the person, then we see the cross and we see all the sins on there, the pride and the, and the whatever, uh, the fears and the agonies and the lusts and uh, all the sins are hanging on the cross. And then when Jesus said, it is finished, it meant that our sins were now destroyed. They were destroyed forever. And so then, they, uh, uh, Jacob and his team were singing here, uh, nothing but the blood. Do we understand that? Nothing. Nothing means no thing. Nothing. There is nothing but the blood. And then, in the scripture reading, uh, they read in uh, 1 John 5 that uh, uh, if ye believe that Jesus is the Son of God, do we believe? You know, we believe in our heads. That's not hard to do. But uh, do we believe in our hearts? Do we believe that it's nothing but the blood? <clears throat> Why the blood? You know, I've never tried this, but they, they tell me that you can, for instance, a window, you can see through a window and you can smear uh, a lot of stuff on the window and you can still see through it. But if you smear blood over a window, you cannot see through it. And the blood, when we're covered, washed by the blood, the Father does not see, the Father sees us as righteous. It's his righteous. By the way, uh, do you realize that you have caused God to be stuck in a body forever? Jesus is a man. He's a me our mediator in front of uh, the Father. It's like a court system. When uh, the devil uh, is the prosecuting attorney and he accuses us of everything under the sun, and then Jesus, our attorney, says to the judge, Father, that the, he's covered under the blood. And the Father says, you're free. Amazing. Thank God for Christmas. <clears throat> then in, uh, uh, in 2 Corinthians 5, Verse 21. For he made whom, for me, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Do you believe that you're righteous? I'm not talking about self righteous. You know, uh, I did a study on uh, confess ones. And uh, if you take the word apart, confess means uh, agreeing with God. So, but we, when we think of confess, we think of, of confessing our sins. And that's what it means. We agree with God that, you know, we have made a mistake. But it also means that we agree with God what he says about us. If he says that we're righteous, do we believe, do we confess that? <clears throat> you know, uh, 
oftentimes it's easy to, to become sin conscious. And if we're sin conscious, we, we might get up in the morning and we might say that today I'm not going to sin. I'm, I'm going to overcome and I'm going to try really hard to live a good life today. And you know what's probably going to happen? We're probably going to stumble because we're sin conscious. We're focusing on sin. You know that we become uh, uh, like the person that we follow. Whoever we're following is who we become like. So instead of becoming sin conscious, uh, we need to get up in the morning and thank God what he did for us and who we are in him. And we will become like him. God conscious, not sin conscious. <clears throat> he made us in his image. We are to be just like him. Just like him. <clears throat> in Galatians 2.20, it's not quite two yet. I have been crucified. Really? Do you believe that? It doesn't say that uh, I will be. It says I have been. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I'd like to close with uh, uh, 1 John 1. You know, Romans 6 talks about, uh, talks about being dead to sin. And if we died to sin, we should no longer live therein. And so why, uh, why do we still walk this earth and, and bemoan us because of our failures? And, you know, I, I, Isaiah... It's Isaiah or Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs, says that a just man falls seven times, <clears throat> but the wicked <laughs> fall into iniquity. You know, it doesn't, because we're righteous, doesn't mean that we never stumble, but it means that we walk in repentance and we realize that we're washed by the blood. Can you imagine, uh, Isaiah says that our own righteousness is like filthy rags, that he takes this blood and he washes these filthy rags till it's white as snow. The blood is in our physical bodies is, our, is the body's healing element. If we have a healthy blood flow, then the body heals itself. And if we're under the blood of Jesus, we receive healing, whether it's physical uh, mental, spiritual healing. We can just sit under uh, God and His arm and uh, shower ourselves in the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood over us. You know, uh, you know what claustrophobia is? <clears throat> the devils get uh, claustrophobia under the blood. They cannot, they cannot 
live under the blood. You cannot. So if we're attacked or we're slipping or going down the wrong way, let's check ourselves. <clears throat> Are we under the blood? In uh, 1 John 1, uh, verse 6, it says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from some sin. Is that what it says? All sin. All. Um, but what does it mean to walk in the light? <clears throat> you know, in, uh, in John 3, uh, it talks about the uh, light and darkness and says that men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. And if we walk in the light, it means that we have nothing to hide. We, we don't care to be exposed because we have nothing to hide. And if, if we do get exposed and, and uh, we see that we're, there's a place in our heart that needs to be corrected or repented of, then we repent and we go on. If we repent, it means that we humble ourselves and we agree with God and he will wash us with his blood. Remember, there is nothing but the blood. We cannot earn it or deserve it. It's the blood. And if we repent, then he washes us with his blood. The life is in the blood. Even Moses talked about that. Uh, verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and truth is not in us. Now that might sound contradictory because the verse before he said that he cleanses us from all sin. Now he says if we have no sin, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and truth is not in us. What is he saying? <clears throat> First he's saying that uh, if we have fellowship with one another, we uh, confess our sins one to another, he will cleanse us from all sin. <coughs> but then the next verse he says, but, <coughs> it doesn't say but, but in my words to add a little bit, or to explain what, uh, how I see this, is that I will cleanse you from all sin. But if you say that you have no sin, then I can't cleanse you. We're not under the blood. It doesn't mean that we should walk around and say, oh, I got sin. You know, look at me. You know, I am a sinful person. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about that we go on our knees and we confess when we receive Christ. We give our heart, our heart to Christ and we confess that we are sinners. And then he will cleanse us from all sin. But first we have to come to that place that we realize that we need a Savior. <clears throat> Then he says again, verse 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. That little word all is a powerful word. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. In uh, Revelation 3, 3, he talks about how we're supposed to watch for, uh, for his coming. And then he says how we watch. He says we walk in repentance. <clears throat> That's how we watch. If we walk in repentance, then we, we are, he is cleansing us and we remain ready. It doesn't mean, you know, man has fallen so far. If he would show us everything, our whole heart, all at once, he would probably destroy us. <coughs> But he knows what we can handle. So if we walk in what we know, what he shows us, we're walking in the light and he keeps cleansing us. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. <clears throat> if we say that we have not sinned, we're self-righteous, then we don't believe in Christmas either. <clears throat> Sin 
So I'll leave you with that. The question is, do we believe? Do we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Thank you very much. I, I really uh, enjoyed this. God bless your day. And uh, I look forward to fellowshipping with you some more. I don't know who's in charge, but I'll turn it over to whoever. <laughs> <laughs>